DNA is very complicated and very... No, not so much complicated. It's, it's very dependent for its working upon the protein world that it is necessary to create. And so we have what's called the catch-22 of the origin of life. Now, RNA is rather like DNA, as you know, uh, in that it uses the same four-letter sequences, slightly different, but in principle they're, they're the same. And if you look at the DNA protein system, RNA does a, good, a reasonably good job of doing both what DNA and protein does. So if we go back to the catch-22, you have to have DNA in order to get protein, but you have to have protein in order to get DNA. That's the problem. Now, what protein is very good at is the essential function of being an enzyme, being a catalyst. What DNA is very good at is uh, self-replication in a highly accurate manner and programming the sequence of protein. RNA is a, it's not as good a catalyst, it's not as good as being an enzyme as protein is, but it can do it. And RNA is not as good at, as being a self-replicator as DNA, but it can do it. And so the RNA world hypothesis is that before you got the DNA protein system, in advance of the catch-22 problem, you had RNA which did both jobs. Well, that's a promising start to a theory of the origin of life. It's not the only one. There are other theories. But the RNA world theory is, a, is one theory that's got quite a vogue at the moment, and it's because it has this dual-purpose character. And before RNA, clay? Well, that's another of the theories, <laughs> that, that before you got anything organic at all, the theory of Graham Cairn Smith is that the very first self-replicating molecules were inorganic. They weren't even mm. organic. They were inorganic clays. That theory hasn't gone down very well in the scientific community. But I think what Cairn Smith gets absolutely right is the, the need for self-replication as the, as the vital ingredient. And his point that DNA is what he calls a high-tech replicator and mm. therefore is unlikely to have been the first thing. Something else must have come before it and then what happened was what he calls an, a genetic takeover. There was sure. a takeover by DNA of some s earlier system. Well, of course, proteins can reproduce themselves, uh, as we know, to our cost with the prions. Well, that's a very special case. Um, proteins are not at all good at reproducing themselves, and the reason is that the vital um, information in a protein, it is contained in the sequence of of amino acids, just as DNA contains information in the sequence of nucleotides. The protein does have the information in the sequence of, which is drawn from 20 amino acids, but proteins that work as enzymes are all coiled up. It's sort of knotted up together. And so the sequence of amino acids is not available to be copied because it's buried deep inside the knot. And that's why DNA is so vital, because DNA it, it contains a sequence that's not buried. The DNA sequence is available to be read, to be transcribed, to be, to be copied. And from that, from that reading is built up the sequence of amino acids in the protein. Then the protein coils up under the laws of chemistry. And once it's coiled up, the sequence cannot be read out, because it's like trying to read what's... If you take a, a strip of... of, of ribbon and write letters on it and then tie it in an elaborate knot. You can't read the letters anymore. In about seven minutes, I'll ask you to ask questions. There'll be a couple of microns downstairs and then a bit later, there'll be a couple of microns upstairs. I just want to ask you a couple of names. Um, uh, Carl Sagan appears in the book, uh, some lovely quotations, but his wife, his first wife doesn't, Lynn Margulis, who has written lots about the cooperative explanation of some evolution as if there is a kind of way that organisms can come together to produce a kind of different form. Why no mention of that? Ah, yes, we all have our cross to bear. <laughs> um, Lynn Margulis um, it, it deserves lasting fame for the endosymbiotic theory of the eukaryotic 